What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back with my 2018 Ford F-150 that I got for stupid cheap, like $8,000 because the auction said there was something wrong with the engine. Well, I decided to take a risk on it. I bought it and uh, there could be something wrong with the engine. So here it is. It's my 2018 Ford F-150 XL. It it's got like 160, 165,000 miles on the odometer. This is a four wheel drive long bed. It is a work truck. It even has the cool looking work truck wheels. All right, they're not so cool looking, but I like them. They're practical. The truck itself actually looks to be in really good shape. It's a nice looking truck. Let me lower this hood down. We have the 5.0 Coyote engine under the hood and it's got a tad bit of a noise, a ticking, tapping, rapping. I really don't know how to describe it, but it's definitely making noise. And after a couple weeks of taking the time to research YouTube and Google and listening to comments on the first video of this truck with people that have had similar issues with theirs, well, it seems like the solution is to simply change the oil. Now I know what you're thinking, it can't be that simple. Well, yes and no. So here's what I did. Liquid Molly makes some great products, guys. I'm gonna put a link to these below the video. It is not sponsored. I paid for all of this with my own money, but I've had great success using Liquid Molly engine flush in the past. This stuff has done good for me. I got two of them because this engine, this Coyote engine holds approximately 10 quarts. Um, with the oil filter. So we're gonna need two of these. Also, this is a last resort right here. This is Liqui Moly Ceratec. This is some pretty expensive stuff, but I've seen a ton of Ford F-150 and Mustang, basically any car with a Coyote engine, the 5.0 Coyote that starts making tapping, ticking sounds. This, this seems to do wonders for this engine. There's only, there's only one downside to this product. And that is, it kind of makes your oil look like you've got a blown head gasket. It's it's supposed to be like a kind of a creamy colored stuff. And once you put it into to your oil, your oil will then look like, you know, it looks like you got a blown head gasket. So if you can get over that, this is actually some really, really good friction modifier. This stuff is amazing. This is amazing. And then finally, we're going to go back and do something different. We're going to install Shell Rotella T6. This is synthetic, fully synthetic, 15W40. Now, like I said, the truck takes approximately 10 quarts. Well, we have two and a half gallons here, so this should be plenty. And I know what you're thinking, 1540 is way too thick. And you'd be right, because on the oil cap, it clearly shows it wants 5W20. So three times thicker, and two times thicker. So yes, it's definitely the wrong weight for the engine. But the reason I chose this is because looking around on forums, it seems this is a common solution to my problem. So I figure if we just do everything, we do the flush, we do the T6, we fire it up and see how it sounds. If I still have any tapping noises, we'll go ahead and add the Ceratec as well. We're going to start with just an oil, uh, 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 an engine flush, just the engine flush alone. We'll put that in there, fire it up, let it run, and we'll see if it sounds any better once we get the motor flush run through it. If it doesn't, well, regardless, we're going to drain the oil and fill it up with the 1540, and then we'll fire it up again. We'll leave this a little low. I don't want to fill it up all the way because if I need to include these two bottles, I don't want to overfill it. So we'll leave it just a tad bit low. We'll fire it up and see how it sounds. If it sounds good, and after it runs for a while and warms up, it's not tapping, great, we're done. If not, we will take our final step and install the Ceratec into this. I'm gonna put links to the Liquid Molly products down below this video on Amazon, so you can go get it for yourself if you wanna try it out. The oil, well, you can get that where I got it, at Walmart. So why don't we start with a baseline? I'm going to start it up and I'm gonna let you hear it. The key should already be in it. 150,000 miles is what this car has on the odometer. Now the other interesting thing is there's no check engine light. There's nothing, there's no warning lights on the dash at all. And 
the tapping noise, although you can hear it, in my opinion, it doesn't sound that bad. It runs perfect. I was getting like 17, 18 miles a gallon out of it. It was doing just fine. Now let me be quiet, and I want you to listen to the tapping noise. Now I know the question is gonna come up, did we check the oil? Well, let's go ahead and do that now. And let's take a look at the condition of the oil and the oil level. So there's the color. And the oil is full, definitely. So we've got full oil and it doesn't look that bad. We'll go ahead and wipe it off. All right, so I say it's time. Let's get this truck in the air. So the directions here are pretty clear. It says, first, we need to run the engine up to operating temperature. After it's up to operating temperature, we'll shut the engine off. We'll add these two cans, and then we need to let it run for approximately 20 minutes. At that point, we can shut it off, change the oil, fire it up again, and see how it sounds. All right, it's been running for quite a while because I got sidetracked with another project on this truck. I just want to take you guys and show you if we clear everything out. The temperature gauge is right there, and that's right where it should be. So I'd say we're safe to go ahead and shut it off. Then let's add our motor flush, or we'll let it run for another 20 minutes, maybe a little longer. I've been busy trying to remove all of these accessories to turn this into more of a daily driver pickup truck instead of a work truck. So this big weather guard toolbox, I don't know how I'm going to remove it by myself, but well, it's it's no longer installed on either side. So this one is off. I'm going to take that headache rack off, and uh, we're also going to remove these these steel beams from each side. We'll get both of those off. I still have to get this out. I've got two of the bolts out. One on this side, one on this side. It requires you to climb under the truck. Once I get the other two out, this will be free. Again, I don't know how I'm going to lift that by myself either. But once we get this and that and the headache rack off, this truck will almost look like a normal pickup truck, you know? Um, aside from needing a tailgate, I'm working on that. We will find a tailgate for this truck. I think it's a nice truck. I drove it uh, several hundred miles with the engine making the sounds that it's making because from all the research I did, it seems like this is... Unfortunately, uh, an all too common problem with the Coyote engine from just about every generation. So I'm not really afraid of it. It doesn't scare me and it drives fine. It gets great fuel economy. So, you know, maybe with some luck and a little bit of this Liquid Molly Pro Line engine flush, maybe just maybe we can save this engine. I mean, what are the chances that it's just dirty? Maybe it was neglected. It's a one owner vehicle, clean title, never been in an accident. It belonged to a company, it's a fleet vehicle. So you would think it's probably been at least reasonably well maintained, especially since it's made it 150,000 miles, but you just never know. Here goes container number two. And then we're gonna button it up, fire it up. And we're gonna hope, I know, I know what you're thinking. There's no way this is going to work. And you might be right. But what does it hurt? It's not hurting anything to put some motor flush into the engine and at least clean it out before we do a fresh oil change. So everything is buttoned back up under the engine bay. Let's go ahead and fire it up. And the tick will be instantaneously gone. I'm kidding. It absolutely will not. But with any luck, maybe, just maybe, as that flush works its way through the engine, I'm very hopeful that it might do something to quiet it down, if not at least eliminate it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stand you guys right here. I'm gonna let you listen to this for a few seconds. And we're gonna come right back to the same spot and see how it sounds in about 20 minutes. The time is now, you can't see it, but six, can you see it? 609, 610. So we will come back at 630.
And here we are. A little bit late. Can't see the time, but it's 640. It doesn't sound any different to me. Which sucks, but hey, at least we know now. The engine got a motor flush. So I guess we can shut her down. I'm gonna let it sit for just a few minutes. While I do, I'm gonna bring you back here, take a look at this. Success. I did it by myself, and I'm gonna tell you, those, those weather guard or rain guard, whatever those things are, good God, they, they make them out of real metal, not cheap uh, aluminum. That, that's, that's real steel type stuff. Here's what was under it. And if you're wondering how I did it by myself, well, I cheated. I put a, a little protector on the bumper. I took my ladder and I angled it here and I just kind of rolled everything down. You can see the mess that I made. And then was the fun part. How does it look? I think it looks so much better. I mean, obviously the bed needs cleaned out and everything, but once the bed is cleaned out, I think the truck looks so much more usable as a, as a daily driver. Um, besides, I don't have keys to those weather things anyway. So the easy part, sadly to say, was getting the stuff out of the truck. It actually came out relatively easily, made its way to the ground thanks to gravity, but the hard part came when it was time to bring it through my gate. Obviously, I don't want to leave that stuff sitting uh, out by the road or anything, so I had to drag it <laughs> all the way over here to where my cameras are because obviously if there's any movement or anything out here in the yard, I want to be able to get a notification and act on it. That thing right there, uh, that weighs a ton. The headache rack with rails, that too, uh, <laughs> it's kind of heavy. And the, uh, the toolbox, honestly, the toolbox wasn't nearly as heavy as everything else, but still heavy enough. I got everything drug over here where I need it. We're gonna let the truck cool for a minute and then we're gonna change the oil. All right, we got the truck on the lift. I could probably go another foot up, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it right where it is. I've got my drain pan under here, and I figure while we're under here, we might as well take a look around. We have not seen the underside of this truck yet. So let me climb in here. We're gonna work our way to the back, and I'm just gonna kind of look around, see how things look. It's got a spare tire. It looks to be in good condition. Everything under here is nice. This is a Texas car. It was in Texas its entire life. Like I said earlier, one owner. 36 gallon fuel tank. Drive shaft looks good. Uh, U joints, I know you really need to check them for play, but I mean, they look good. Everything is nice and dry. I don't see any leaks. Exhaust is intact. Transfer case looks good. Like I said, no, there is no leaks under here at all. None. Everything under here looks really, really good. There's the front drive shaft going to the front differential, which also looks exceptionally good. Catalytic converter is intact. That's always good. Transmission pan, no leaks. And the oil pan, there's your, there's the block. It's kind of hard to see, but it's up there. Your oil drain plug is this weird little three eighths looking thing. That's different. I assume you just put a socket, a socket, a, an extension or a ratchet in there and turn and it pops out. That's my guess. They're doing weird things with cars these days, guys. Moving up to the suspension. Again, everything appears to be in good shape. No ripped boots anywhere. Axles, no ripped boots. Everything on this truck just looks to be in exceptionally good shape. Even the sway bar uh, bushings or in links are in good condition. <sighs> this truck is far too nice to be having a problem with the engine. I don't know. I'm not sure that I buy that it's like a major problem. I've had some people saying it's definitely a severe problem. I've had other people saying my truck sounds exactly like yours and it has for five years and it's fine. I don't know, but I do know we're going to get this oil out and we're gonna put some fresh oil in. Are we ready for this? I don't even know. Does this just pop out? Am I about to make a huge mess? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this over here. I don't, I don't really get how this works. Does it just, does it just fall out? I'm gonna burn myself, aren't I? Yeah, this is gonna hurt. It is hot under here, guys. It is really, really hot. 
I'm gonna get burned. <laughs> I can't get it. I just, I can't, uh, golly. I let this thing cool off for like 15 minutes and it is still really, really warm under this truck. Come on, I don't wanna break anything. Let's just, let's just get this over with. I think that's out. Yeah, so I'm gonna reach up here. Ow, fuck me, you son of a bitch. Ah. Anyway, there's the, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, great, great, great. Just pour wherever the hell you want to, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Spill all over the floor. Hey, Ford, you suck. Oh, my God. Oh, motherfucker. Are you, are you serious right now? We're serious right now. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I gotta cool off. All right, so I, I've got oil uh, everywhere. It's all over me, my legs, my shoes, my socks, my shorts, my shirt, my camera. It, it splattered. It splattered everywhere, and the sheer volume of oil that came gushing out of the engine overflowed the bowl for my oil pan, my oil drain pan, um, and proceeded to make just a, a, a huge mess. Ever thankfully. From the last mess, I still have a bunch of this uh, super clean um, dry floor product. So uh, it's not as bad as it could have been. Um, coming up here though, uh, I've already wiped this down once. I'm gonna have to wipe that down again. The whole thing, all of it is just soaked and, and dripping with oil. My bridge jack is completely soaked. There's oil literally, it, it, it's, it's everywhere. It, it's, I mean, I have oil everywhere. Of course, it got all over the underside here as well. Oil everywhere. This was a, this is an ingenious idea, Ford. I got to tell you, this interesting little drain plug right here. I get that it could be really convenient, right? I, I, you don't need a socket or anything. Just, uh, <laughs> but in my particular instance today, this thing has ruined my life. Well, I've done the best I can with what I've got. Turns out I'm out of super clean. Looks like I'm gonna have to re-up on some more of that. Um, I just took what was already on the floor and kind of mixed it around a little bit, try to soak up that mess. It, it made a huge mess, guys. That was, that was, <laughs> was really bad. I've got the drain plug back in. I've cleaned everything up under here. There's no more mess. Everything looks, you know, decent. Again, even the truck, I wiped it up. So let's bring this thing back down to the ground and uh, why don't we proceed with putting some fresh oil in it and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of controversial comments down in the comment section about using the wrong weight of oil but I'm telling you from what I've researched online this seems to be a really popular way of making these things quiet down and they seem to continue running for years and years and thousands and thousands of miles with no further issue. Whether it's gonna work for us or not, well, that remains to be seen. All right, so I'm gonna do this as best I can. <laughs> this two and a half gallon jug is massive and I'm really not trying to make a mess, but this could be, this could be very difficult. Come on, here we go. Aha, very nice. All right, I'm gonna continue trying not to spill this. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna leave it just a tad underfilled in case I decide to use the Saratech. Um, we'll see what it sounds like once we get this fresh oil in here. Hopefully, this makes some kind of a noticeable difference. Well, it's the moment of truth. I, uh, I forgot to change the oil filter. <laughs> It, it occurred to me, I'm glad we didn't go any further with it, but I did get under there and I did change the oil filter. It had a Valvoline oil filter. It was a uh, VO-88 is the filter that came off of it. Um, so we do now have a fresh filter. I also topped off the oil right to the edge of the safe mark hashes. All right, so she's safe. It's got plenty of oil, but I left enough room just in case I need to add our, uh, 
our liquid molly. Let's find out what it sounds like now. That doesn't sound any different. <laughs> that sounds no different at all, none. It sounds exactly the same as it did when we started. So our last hope is our Liqui Moly Ceratec, our extreme friction modifier. And I wanted to show you what this stuff looks like. And yeah, don't think that there's something wrong with it. This is actually what it looks like. Yeah. Like I said, it, yeah. There's one bottle, one more to go. Bottle number two. Haven't heard any change in the way it's running yet. I guess we'll just sit here and listen to see if anything changes. Something tells me it is not going to. Well, it doesn't sound any different at all. Like I said, I've been told by so many different people that have watched the videos. I've been told by different websites that the noise is normal. I don't know about you, but I don't think a ticking engine is normal. At least <laughs> not to me it's not. Um, I've also heard that uh, it could be the timing chain. It could be the cam phasers. It could be the timing chain guides. It could be the timing chain tensioner. It could be piston slap. There could be too much wear in the cylinder bores and the pistons kind of wobbling around in there. I've been told that it could be spark plugs, it could be an oil change. Uh, I've been told a lot of things. And after sitting here idling this whole time, it's still getting 17 miles a gallon. I'm going to buckle up. We're going to take it for a quick cruise up and down the street. And then we're going to come back and see if it's changed any. I don't expect that it will. Man, I really need a tailgate with a camera. I've got to find one. This truck is just not gonna be complete until it has the tailgate. It has just been pouring all day. I don't know what else to do with this truck. Like I said, it runs perfectly fine. It drives perfectly fine. It gets good gas mileage. And the best part is there's no check engine light. And it, it you can't hear it when you're inside the truck. And that is the complaint that I've heard from so many people is when you're in the truck, you don't even know that it's happening. It's only if you're on the outside. Now I filled the tank up on this. It still has 510 miles to empty. The suspension on this truck is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it really does. Look. Oh, I'm slipping. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe I ought to kick it in four wheel high. Now, here's another thing. Okay, I'm going to do this real quick. I've had a lot of people tell me you cannot be going 50, 60 miles an hour and put it in four by four. You want to watch me? Here it is right here. Four wheel drive. Shift in progress. Boom. And we're doing 60. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, modern technology. You can absolutely shift into four-wheel drive on the fly. Isn't it great? Uh, trucks have been doing this for a really, really long time. So I have a feeling that the people that were telling me that you can't do that are probably a little more old school. So here we are, we're cruising, it's dark, all the gauges look good, no warning lights on the dash, I'm going over 60 miles an hour. <laughs> The truck rides absolutely perfect. Will the engine quiet down when we get back? Probably not. But let's cross our fingers and hope. Well, what is your verdict? Do you think it fixed it? Or do you think it sounds exactly the same as it did before? Drop your vote down below. I'm gonna drop a comment right now and say, my guess is it probably sounds exactly the same as it did before. Let's roll this window down. Let's get out. Let's pop the hood. I can already hear it. <laughs> I can already hear it. 
no change at all. Well, that is unfortunate, guys. But sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. I honestly can't tell you if it's coming from one side or the other, if it's coming from the front. I, it just sounds like the whole engine. It doesn't seem to matter where I move. I don't know. I, I, I'm at a loss. Well, it's out of here. Nothing has changed. And to be quite honest with you, I really didn't expect it to. I hoped, of course I hoped but I did not expect that any of that was going to make a difference. What's actually wrong with it? I don't know. I've also heard it could be the intake manifold. Yep, the intake manifold apparently has these little flaps, little, little plastic flappers. And over time, those get loose and the flappers can end up making a racket on top of the engine. So, you know, <laughs> again, I just don't know. What I do know is that I am finished for today. Two steps forward, three steps back. Um, I was just checking out my motorcycle. The battery was dead because it just sits and sits and sits. So I got the battery back to life and everything. And the battery's good. It fires right up. Now, the only problem is here's my rear brakes. You hear that? That's no pressure. That's, there's nothing. I've got, I've got no rear brakes at all on my Harley. Seems like I still have front brakes, but you see, seems like you gotta pump them a couple times. Must have got some air in the system somehow, maybe from sitting? I, yeah, I don't know. So hopefully it's still under warranty. If not, then, well, I'm gonna be in trouble. It should be, it's a 2022, I think. It doesn't even say what is. I, I can't remember if this is a 2021 or 2022. It's the first year the Nightster came out. Um, and I'm going to have to drag it. Either way, it's going to have to go on a trailer and i got to drag it back to Harley-Davidson. This truck, however, is something that I'm really proud of. Yes, I'm going to get to you really, really soon. Um, so this should be Saturday's video for you guys. It is Thursday for me, so Friday is going to be <laughs> Monkey Wrench Mike and I getting the cop car, the P71 Crown Vic, back together. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch that video. And then Saturday is going to be the video you're watching right now, the 2018 F-150. But while we're on the subject of that, I wanted to point out that this truck is ready to go. This truck is ready. I am sending this truck to Copart, like now. And not just this truck, but also my Chevy SSR is already up for bids. Like it's ready, it's it's ready to be bid on. This one will probably not be up for bids yet, but it might be, it, it could be. But just in case it's not, put it on your watch list if you're interested. It is a great running truck. And as you can see the interior, well, we did a little work on it. My fiance and I really worked hard to clean this thing up and make it look decent, make it look respectable again. As you can see, all the windows work, four wheel drive works, tires are in good shape. It runs and drives like it's supposed to. We put a drive shaft in it. It's a great truck. Little oopsie right there. And considering where this truck came from, you know, stolen <laughs> with no wheels, it sure has come a long, long way. Ice cold air conditioning. The interior looks and smells good again. It's been a lot of work, but this one is done. This one is ready to go. So I'm gonna roll the windows back up and I guess go park it outside because it doesn't need to be in here anymore. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and park this outside and just leave my shop empty for a while. This one does have a TPMS light on and the airbag light is intermittent on this and I haven't bothered scanning it to see what it is. It seems to come and go as it pleases. 167,488 miles on the odometer, full tank of gas. Like I said, four wheel drive. You can click that sucker right into gear and bingo four by four four low let's put it in neutral four low you can hear that click and in gear oh yeah <laughs> she's ready to crawl <laughs> she's ready to go yes four low works like it's supposed to four high works like it's supposed to put it back in two-wheel drive click 
back into two wheel drive mode. And there we go. And like I said, air conditioning works, heat works. Um, radio does not work, obviously. There's no speakers, so. Um, I guess that's about it for that. There's my new Ram 1500. And right here is the Chevy SSR that is uh, already up for sale. Hopefully, I can get the F-150 up for sale very, very soon. So check below the video, guys. There should be a link to both of these cars on Copart's website. If you're interested in either one of those, um, the SSR is a phenomenal little car, man. I really do love that thing, but at the end of the day, I don't have any use for it sitting here in my yard doing nothing. I got too many cars again, and it's time to thin the herd. So I am getting ready to let a bunch of these cars go. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I guess I'm going to get out of here. I had a lot of fun today. It doesn't always work out the way you want it to, but I had fun nonetheless. I got that truck super cheap, $8,000. So it didn't hurt to throw a few products in it, see if it does any good. Could I change the motor? Yeah, I guess I could start looking around to find out how much a motor costs. I've seen them for four, five, six thousand dollars and up. If you want a new one, it's ten thousand dollars. I don't know how much I really want to dump into it. I'm tempted just to send it back to auction. I, I really don't know. I'm undecided at this point in time. But anyway, I'll figure it out. And if you enjoyed today's video, well, hit the thumbs up button. And I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. Stay tuned for Sunday because I have to come back down here and I've got to pick the next victim. And I'm thinking since we're on a truck kick right now. Maybe it should be the Raptor. I've got a ton of parts for the Raptor that need to be installed. I've also got a few parts for the Mustang GT. Really nothing more than headlights and taillights. But uh, we also got parts for the, uh, the Impala SS. I got new plugs, new valve cover gaskets and grommets. I've got new plug wires. Um, the Raptor has a oxygen sensor. I've got both filters. I've got a blower motor resistor. I've got the proper lug nuts. I've got the Ford emblem that's missing, windshield wipers, LED headlights, new tail lights. Is that it? And then this is also for the Impala right here because that stupid sun visor on the uh, on the driver's side keeps flapping around. I bought a, that was actually really expensive and it doesn't have to come off of an SS, but what I'm trying to say is I've got a lot of parts. Oh, that's not all. I almost forgot. Over here, you guys have told me I've got to get a factory bumper because the, the, uh, the weird looking cow scooper bumper on the Raptor is hideous. Well, I listened, <laughs> let me tell you, that's an expensive little piece of metal, guys. That piece of metal was almost a thousand dollars. Yeah, used. That's that's used for almost a thousand dollars. And I got the skid plate. That one's a little rough, but I mean it is a two hundred and fifty thousand mile Raptor. So I think that's the plan. Tomorrow we'll nail the Raptor. Let's see if we have a little more success with the Raptor. I think we can knock all of that out. In fact, there's another thing for the Raptor too. The digitizer is dead for the radio, so you can't use the touchscreen. It doesn't function at all. So we need to replace the digitizer as well somewhere around here. I honestly don't know where it is now. That's a little concerning. But somewhere around here is a new digitizer for it as well. So come on back tomorrow. Like the video if you enjoyed today's content. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.